Yeah, I mean, I think a, a great way to start if we want to get rolling is just if you want to just quickly introduce yourself, how you got involved with Bankless, both Bankless DAO and Bankless LLC, if that's the case, and then kind of then be, start giving the differentiation. That would be great. Okay. Uh, in uh, real life, uh, I have uh, a marketing company and an IT company developing that blockchain projects. I started uh, um, following blockchain uh, and crypto in uh, more and more and being involved in in 2017 as many of us um, it was not just a way of investing or such because i'm not an investor i just buy tokens that uh, i want to study but uh, it was the way i started to collaborate work with uh, some small projects i then uh, helped uh, uh, building a new uh, blockchain project in Italy that is called Scripta, and uh, we bring it to life. In, uh, in a couple of years, uh, we were able to do something very nice with it. But then uh, everything must uh, must must proceed in some ways, and uh, our restarted looking for something new. We started to test and to deploy things on Ethereum, both for a personal and reason, but for business reason. While doing everything that I was doing in the crypto space, uh, I become a member of Bankless DAO. Uh, becoming a member of Bankless DAO in the first days meant, meant that you were a, a subscriber to the to the mailing list uh, and to the podcast of Bankless. Uh, if you were a paying subscriber, you received uh, the token that uh, could uh, that gave you the access to the DAO as a member. But um, as I say, the uh, Bankless DAO is born from Bankless as an LLC, but uh, it, it was the decision of ben Bankless LLC to create a separate entity. So Bankless DAO doesn't does not receive orders from LLC or such as maybe someone could could believe, and it is not a, a kind of a weapon of LLC. Um, the distribution was very fair because every single subscriber, and also if uh, if he was a subscriber from uh, 2020, uh, the people received even more tokens, and so the. The members of the DAO uh, were the subscribers of uh, Bankless. Why is why that? Because uh, the, the aim of the DAO it is the same of LLC going Bankless, uh, turning one billion people to a new way to live and to uh, use uh, financial instruments to be able to pay without bank, to be able to um, manage their wealth and their money without bank. So. Who could be the best uh, uh, member of a DAO, of a bank, bankless DAO, if not the same subscribers of the of the mailing list? So it was, I think, it was kind of easy by them to put aside it. Also, other members uh, were uh, received the tokens from uh, being uh, involved with uh, Gitcoin, boom, and there were other ways to to receive those uh, those uh, tokens because. Uh, the start that there was no pool, there was no way to buy those tokens. Now you have it. Now you can. There are many pools and such. But then, uh, this is how the Bankless DAO uh, was born. The first days, it was, uh, I can say, it was very exciting. It was a bit of a mess, of a mess because there were some uh, means, but the, most of the members didn't know what the DAO was. And I didn't know anything about behaving in a DAO. It's like a it's like a big social experiment. You take one thousand. Was there, there were about one thousand when I think uh, eight eighteen hundred uh, people that were members in the same time. Many of them knew about the DeFi and such, but many many of them didn't know anything about DAOs. And uh, many people were waiting for someone to tell them what to do. And some of them, as a, as a, as coach that is here, they took the lead. They decided that they were not there to wait for some proposals from others, but they could do something more. They could propose. They could help. They could shape the DAO 
as they wanted, because there was not a clear path of how we were going to to grow, how we could do the everyday job of a DAO. And plus, Bankless DAO is born as a as a, as a kind of a social media or a media DAO, uh, something that could should create culture and should uh, communicate. And this is even more difficult because many of the people there were developers and didn't know how to behave in a mar- in a kind of marketing environment. And the marketing people didn't know didn't have the instruments to understand the DAO. So it was kind of difficult in the first days, but uh, I think uh, we managed well. That's super interesting. I appreciate the share. That I would love for you to like dig into the details of those early days of the DAO. Um, so what did help get people involved? How did you guys sort of get like early contributors accustomed to contributing to a DAO? Um, who and why were like, who were the early contributors and why did they step up to the plate? Um, can you sort of just walk through like what the, what those early days look like? Yeah, well, well, let's say that, uh, we had some admin, administrators, some admins, and one of them is uh, Abu Weber Joe. He had uh, a clear path on how the DAO should behave, should do, to, in order to find an order in this big chaos that there was. And uh, but there were people that uh, step up, as you said. Um, someone decided that uh, they could be a kind of gu- a guide for the others. And uh, I think it is a natural way of a group of people that to find someone that uh, uh, decide to be a guide, uh, not for a glory, not for a reward, but just uh, to be able to see uh, a path from the chaos to be a kind of order. Even if the order inside, inside the DAO is not what uh, it is the old, it is not the same as an order in a social in normal social community in real life. So we managed to see uh, some some of us. I did it a, a bit, but I didn't uh, as much as people as uh, I don't know. Frog Monkey, uh, and you you met uh, as Koros uh, as a coach uh, and others uh, that decided that um, it was uh, a very nice uh, experiment and it was not. Uh, the case to let it fall in chaos. What they did, uh, they decided to r- to r- write a lot. They r- wrote uh, proposals. They wrote their ideas. They wrote how the DAO could shape the study of other DAOs. So we are uh, we are now a DAO that is composed by many guilds, and uh, we have guilds as uh, you are doing here. We have projects. We have people that. Uh, just want to work, and there are people that uh, want to contribute a little without being involved in anything, really, but uh, they like to be there. So now we have an order, and uh, it is a, uh, it is a, uh, in the same way it is simple and it is complex how this order was uh, was achieved. Uh, it was achieved uh, because maybe because of the of the uh, of the weekly talks uh, that we have uh, that uh, having people that were uh, that. Want the stand up and ask it to talk uh, for others, uh, they become kind of uh, natural leaders between the community just because they wanted to say something, just because they wanted to be more involved, or because they didn't have the shame to stay there without uh, without being silent. And uh, this was the beginning. Then, as I told uh, I told before, there were the guilds. The guilds that helped a lot because every one of us. Uh, could be part of more than one guild. And so every one of us was able to find his own interest, his own dreams, his own path. Maybe someone that was that never did the marketing before now is in, in the marketing guild. Or we have a very a big, a big, big number of guilds right now. We have 13 of them, maybe, if I'm not wrong. In 13 uh, guilds, we have uh, the educators. And who are the educators? They are the ones that uh, help uh, designing and writing instructions from the other for the others, and uh, try to uh, put some uh, educational content inside of uh, every kind of communication that the uh, Bankless DAO has. Then we have the writers, 
of course, we have the designers, we, the, we have the AV guild, we have the marketing guild, we have uh, the researcher guild and the analyst, the analyst guild. That maybe they could be uh, confused as the same thing, but they are not, because uh, the analyst, the analyst uh, uh, study the token uh, behavior, study the social channels behavior, and study how the the votation is uh, the voting snapshot is carried out, how the, uh, the the way that the 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 bank distribution went, and the researchers instead they go on finding new ways to implement things inside the DAO and inside the DAO and outside the DAO. We have uh, even more than that. we have the business developer that uh, uh, coach. Uh, uh, lead for 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 some times, and now he's uh, leading to something else, some some someone else, because he wants to focus on community management. Mm -hmm. We have the operation guild. We have uh, we hope we have also uh, another kind of. We have the treasure guild that is uh, absolutely important in any kind of guild, uh, in any kind of DAO that has no uh, central authority. And then we have uh, another thing that is um, the Grand Committee. I am in the, in the Grand Committee that is uh, not a guild, but is something that uh, should uh, be able to understand which project uh, can receive uh, money, uh, bank token from, from the DAO in order to develop their, their project. Um, the Grand Committee uh, accept, uh, distribute the funds to the guilds, uh, and the funds to the guilds are... Uh, uh, are, um, are not something that uh, can be uh, neglected. It, 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 they are they are, they are something that is it, it was uh, decided inside the, the season one proposal that every guild will receive a, a, a sum for each season in order to be able to tip or pay the contributors or to have something to pay for inner project in, inside the guild's project. But I, I I can go on a, a lot, so it, it is better if you if I focus <laughs> on the question that you that you that you told me. No, I, I appreciate you running through that. That's super interesting, and I think Bankless, especially the the way you guys have structured guilds, and and I think the the educators' role that you mentioned is really interesting because that's something we're also thinking about in forefront as we're putting together these teams and guilds. Is how can we best make sure that the infrastructure is in place and the information is in place for contributors to onboard and contribute as quickly as possible, right? One other yeah. thing that I'm I'm very, very interested in um, that Bankless does very well is these inter-guild projects. In your guys' Discord, you have a pretty significant section um, where a ton of projects are either being discussed or in the works that require input from multiple guilds across the across the now. How do you guys deal with inter inter-guild relations and making sure that like people can, are contributing across teams? And like, what does that structure look like? Well, let's say that uh, in the first weeks, but uh, it is something that is still uh, uh, it, it is still going on. It is that uh, many contributors uh, are willing to do everything they can in order to help uh, the DAO uh, grow and uh, to to proceed on uh, his uh, dreams and his uh, aims. So. A lot of work is made, is made by many of us that wants everything to go well. And then maybe sometimes we double the effort in order to find a common way to work and to, to share information between the guilds. We have an operation guild that, uh, is, uh, that was built in order to facilitate those inter-guild projects. And uh, but I can tell you that uh, we are still uh, organizing it. So everything that you see around, it is made by the voluntary um, um, behavior of its members. So if someone needs a translator, let's say, because I am in the translator skill too, uh, then can, come and go, or usually they go to the, to the, um, to the champion of the guild, uh, the main, uh, the, the one that, uh, that, that is uh, on the lead of the team and ask for translators. Uh, if someone can uh, help us here, can help us there. And it is the same for each project. If a project needs devs, then 
uh, someone, the one that the, the 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 person that is uh, starting the project will ask them to, to join, and this could be a, a guild, an inter guild project, uh, meaning that all the guilds is uh, involved, or could be an inter guild but in a smaller kind of way because uh, it is just people from many guilds that are working together. So we have two kind of uh, collaborations. Uh, and I think both of them are very interesting because uh, if a project is uh, very, very important for the DAO as, uh, let's say, building the new website or the onboard project. The onboard project is something that uh, the DAO is uh, building with more than 20 people now. It will be, some, it will be a project that will uh, help uh, uh, users that uh, are uh, already in crypto, but uh, are usually um, people that invest uh, in a cent centralized exchange to uh, let them learn how to do it uh, in the decentralized ex exchange in order to change the point of, of, of their point of view of the, on the investment side, on how they, be, they can use the money. So it will be like a kind of... Uh, there will be many lessons with the gamification part that will teach people how to invest in protocols, in DeFi protocols, on layer two protocols and such. So we are talking with some of the of these protocols. We are talking with with some project. Some today we spoke with Polygon, let's say, in order to have their their opinion and. Uh, on what we were doing, and uh, they, I can tell you, they were really, uh, really happy of what uh, we are doing on the on the onboard project. But then there are smaller projects. Let's say I am in a project that is uh, the Mask IO project, a partnership project. It is something that right now is small, not because it is something small, but because it doesn't need uh, the participation of all the guilds. The, all the guilds. So there are some people from the guilds that I found, people that uh, had the interest to be in this project, and uh, and then uh, I am doing with the, with them this uh, this path to have a partnership with Mask IO, and there are many, as you said, there are many of them. So super interesting. I appreciate you for sharing that. And then I think the last question that I wanted to get into on this particular topic of guilds, because I think we could talk about this all day if we wanted to, um, but it was mentioned in the voice text that you guys have around 15 guilds currently. How does the community go about deciding whether or not a new guild is necessary? Um, and what does that process currently look like? Well, in the season zero, let's say, or the one that uh, ended uh, last week and the beginning, yeah, last week or in the beginning of July, I don't remember, uh, the guilds were formed uh, because someone told that uh, I need this guild. Then uh, there was a quick decision if the, this new guild uh, has a sense uh, and then it was created. For season one and then when we will go to season two more, even more, the decision will be stricter. There will be, because now we had funds, as you know. Before there were there were no funds to distribute. So each guild was a, a kind of act of faith. I'm starting in because I believe it. I believe in it. I believe in what this guild what this guild can do. Right now, all the guilds will receive funds. So uh, you you can always see someone that maybe will want to have a guild just to receive funds. This is something that can be monitored because uh, the, the treasury um, management of a DAO, it is uh, a top priority. So new girls won't be, uh, won't, can, cannot, uh, cannot uh, uh, like come to life uh, for the decision of one, but there will be a process, but it, this, this is a process that we started to talk about uh, in, the few, in the last days. So we don't have an exact, uh, a precise idea of how it will go. Excellent. Yeah, they're all, like you said at the beginning, like so many people don't even know like what participation in the DAO looks like, 
So people are like learning. I think every, even the, the quote unquote experts in the space are still learning as we go along, right? So I think the level of organization and thought that you guys have put behind all of this is extremely, extremely impressive. So props to you and the entire Bankless community. Um, I want to zoom out a little bit away from like the nitty gritty of guilds and get into this question of the the mission of the Bankless DAO. So you mentioned at the beginning of this conversation conversation that Bankless LLC, which as a media company has like very explicit views and very like broad and ambitious goals for like pushing the crypto ecosystem forward. Um, but the Bankless DAO is separate from the Bankless uh, LLC. Despite that, though, as you also mentioned at the beginning, m- most, if not all of the early members of Bankless DAO were from the Bankless LLC community and thus most likely shared a lot of that same vision and mission. Um, So my question for you is, initially, what did the Bankless DAO mission look like? And I think that's a a pretty obvious answer. But then moving forward, how do you see that mission evolving as more and more people are entering the DAO? And how do you manage the values and the mission and keeping everybody aligned as the DAO grows larger? Well, uh, the more people is in the DAO, the more difficult it will, uh, unless uh, we have uh, a strong uh, a strong set of values that we can share. The first value, as you know, is the go bank plus one. And uh, I can tell you that uh, as any company or a community or a country and such uh, must uh, um, go hard on communicating those values in order that uh, every member will know which those values are and what is the idea of the DAO. This idea can change because uh, the, the, the DAO participants, the DAO members can change with time. But uh, right now, the values that, uh, you know, that the, the DAO is just less than three months old. So... The, the the values today are the same ones that were were uh, said in the first day. So going bankless, going uh, to reach one billion people, um, and this is the the main point. There are many different ways uh, on how this uh, this this uh, this target can be achieved, and how those values can be um, can be. Uh, taken outside in the world, in the other communities, such. And uh, every one of us has maybe a different opinion on on it. But uh, at the end, uh, I think that uh, when the values and the ideas and the aims are clear enough and generalized, I don't know if it is a correct word, uh, enough, uh, then... uh, more and more people will be able to understand it and to be able and we will be able to agree to them because if you don't agree to them you can you can change them you can try to change them convincing convincing other people or you can go in another community another DAO that has to share the same value you have but uh, as i as i say that there are many ways that those values can be uh, can, can be can be propagated. One of them, as I told you, is for us the onboarding project because uh, the onboarding the onboarding project and the same as the website uh, will be our two weapons uh, to to go to the war for our values. And uh, both the website and the onboard project share one particular uh, thing that is not very common in crypto. Both of them will be translated in the maximum possible languages. So there will be the same website and same onboard project in a European country language, in English. It will be in Spanish, it will be in African languages, in, uh, in Asian languages. Because if you want, if you, we want to go bankless to reach one billion people, we must be able to communicate in many different languages. One of the first things that we did, that I did with the 
translator gives, uh, and it was obviously it was something that was agreed with the uh, with the DAO. It was posting the bankless uh, um, the, ban- ban- the bankless object the, the, the bankless idea in many different language tweets. I don't know if uh, some of you could see. It. So we had uh, those tweets are written in uh, in English, in Spanish, in Italian, in French, in, uh, in German, in Dutch. Uh, we have it in uh, Mandarin. Have it in Japanese. We have it uh, in uh, in uh, standard Arabic, Farsi, as such. So we are trying to be open, uh, to open ourselves to all the world, to all the nations, and to communicate them uh, what crypto is, what the DeFi is, uh, and why we think it would be better to um, go further the, the present situation and to go, it, it is simpler because uh, to say to go bankless, but we know it is just a slogan, but we work every day to um, incentivize people to learn, to learn by themselves. We will try to give them some ways to, to, to learn. We are also working with some protocols to build a, easy way to participate to the DeFi project uh, as the bad index uh, that uh, Bankless DAO did with the uh, index code. It will be an index, it is an index fund that will, I think will start on the 20th of July that will be composed by Bitcoin, Ethereum and, uh, DeFi, uh, and a DeFi product. So people that uh, are not uh, used to invest in many, in many different uh, um, coins or they are used to but in centralized uh, uh, exchange now will be able to just uh, put uh, their investment in one index this index uh, will give them uh, the, the, the liquidity token they will be able to stake this liquidity token and it is the simplest way for them to learn while investing so this is a, a, a combination of uh, education of financial instruments of uh, uh, inform uh, of a website of a uh, of project of translation it is a big effort that uh, try to cover everything that is possible to achieve the the values the the aims and to be able to arrive to at this billion people we always talk about yeah i think that's fantastic and i think the the challenge becomes that Bankless's mission is so broad and it and it's broad because it has to be, right? In order to to onboard the next billion people to to crypto in order, order to like make the world go bankless, as you guys say. Like it requires like a very broad, generalizable mission that can get everybody who's even remotely interested on board in some capacity. Um and the reason I ask that question is because like it's hard enough to rally people behind a very like concise niche vision um, and keep people on task and on track. So I can only imagine how difficult that becomes when the mission just expands and expands and expands. That said, the structure of Bankless, I think, is something that all social, commu- social token communities should be looking to. Um, because the way that the DAOs are structured and that inter-DAO relations that we talked about previously really allows everybody to find their place and work on like the specific niche that they're passionate about while also having like broad um, uh, access and broad contribution across the DAO, right? So, yeah. no, that's a fantastic answer and I really appreciate you running through that. Um, I, Sovereign- I, thank, I thank you to summarize it because I'm using five times the word that you do. <laughs> when, you, when, you talk, when you speak in a different language, it's always like this. No, I, you did a great job, Summer. I mean, you, you gave me all the information to, to, to walk through that. So I, I appreciate you and no, you're doing a, a fantastic job. Um, I just called Sovereign Health the stage. But do you have any thoughts? Hey, appreciate you hopping up. Do you have any thoughts on anything we've talked about so far? Anything you think uh, would be valuable uh, to add to the conversation? I think that uh, Sovereign Health uh, will be able to um, show you what the community management in a DAO is and not just with that. So I think that uh, he will be able to cover all the points that I didn't. So I'm, I'm happy to be, to be able to, to, uh, to being able to be here and talk with you. But I think that uh, Sovereign Health could do the same good job that I hope I did.
<laughs> yeah, you killed it, bro. No worries there. Um, definitely one thing that I think is a very key piece to add that uh, will wrap this kind of stuff up um, and help tie it all together, at least from a community, a community and a self-organizing standpoint is in order to have the maximum impact that we want to have and achieve our ambitious goals, we need a combination of community and culture. And you hear me beating the drum about your three P's uh, constantly, which is passion, purpose, and principles. And when you're out of alignment with your three P's, it's hard to find alignment anywhere else in your life. And it doesn't matter whether you're talking about a DAO, your personal life, your business, or whatever. It's all the same. So really tying that in and creating a seamless process for people is absolutely critical. Like me, I'm a, I'm a call a spade a spade guy. Um, I'm not much into stories and narratives and fluff. I'm like, just hit me between the eyes with what I want to know. And I'm happy and, and I'm on my way. Um, and I think, I think that those elements really go into like building the community, getting people active, getting people contributing is taking that step back and looking at what can we do to mitigate friction? What can we do to create a seamless onboarding process? Um, how are people who are getting exposed to our organization that are outside of our organization, what is our process for getting them onboarded and involved and contributing in a way that feels empowering to them? Where they can feel the most value, I uh, feel like they're, they're providing the most value or like Grendel said, uh, maybe somebody just needs wants to learn new skill sets, needs to change their pace. So they're going to hop into a specific guild uh, to develop themselves on that personal or professional level, whatever whatever their attention is. So like the early days of, of Bankless, they were they were chaos. Like there was a lot of drama around how the airdrops were handled and different things. Um, <clears throat> Lots of people were stepping on each other's toes, starting duplicate projects from a lack of communication. And there were all these barriers to entry. So one of the first things I did was jump in and start. Uh, oh, plus, I've only been learning about crypto for like three months, by the way, guys. <laughs> Heard about Bankless like two weeks before all this happened. So like I'm about as green as they get. Uh, you're welcome. But I jumped in and started working on that airdrop proposal but that squared away and made sure the community was happy, uh, made sure that people were um, feeling like they were heard and knowing that they were not just feeling that they were heard, but knowing that they're important and knowing that they're valued and knowing that they're welcome to jump back there. And then from there, it was really, what can we do to streamline operations in a way that makes sense, empowers people to be self-starters, and just jump jump in and out of things as conveniently as possible, while at the same time like reducing that that friction or the the contention that happens um, if somebody just you know you, personal issues come up, you're probably not going to hop into the now saving you're taking a, a step back or whatever to focus on your personal life. Uh, so how can we accommodate the the meat sack world? Um, yeah, it's been an interesting journey. It's been fun. Lots of learning across the board for all of us. Uh, but that's really what I wanted to add there and uh, build off of what Grendel said. Without focusing on the community, without taking care of our people and showing that they're appreciated and valued, it's going to be very hard to attract talent that is going to stick around and, and help fulfill the mission over the long term. And that, that's about all I got on that one. Yeah, appreciate you sharing that, man. I think, A, I did not know that you had just gotten involved in the crypto space like three weeks before Bankless that launched. Um, so like the, your level of your level of interest and your level of knowledge and your level of participation is fantastic. And I'd like big props for that. I think that I, there's a lesson to be learned there. Like one huge factor, most likely in your ability to like onboard in Bankless as quickly and as effectively as you did um is bankless is like focus on just ensuring that like everything is documented sort of like grand said at the beginning right so like in all of these guilds and throughout the community everything is documented onboarding is clear um there are ways for people to contribute immediately even if they don't know a ton about the DAO, right and i think that's the, the differentiating factor with any DAO 
anybody can get involved, but your level of involvement in like previous DAOs and your level of understanding of the crypto space and your level of understanding of what needs to happen before you even enter a DAO is the deciding factor in whether or not you're going to get involved without those onboarding factors being in place, right? Because if you have a level of understanding of like, okay, I've been involved in three other DAOs and thus I know at least to some extent, just what needs to happen in DAOs for things to chug along, it's probably going to be much more e- easy for you to get involved in a new DAO than somebody who's completely fresh to the space and requires some level of handholding to get on board, right? Um, so I think you guys have done a, a great job with that, and I think you are a uh, perfect example, right? Yeah, and, and that was really... That was really my biggest barrier to entry um, when it all spun up. Was I'm like I'm like I, I'm a health coach. I, I coach fitness classes. I help people develop unbeatable mindsets, leadership development, and business development, uh, team building, and business development. Finding a place for those skills to actually work. Um, and I didn't even know what a DAO was before it spun up. Uh, before being spun up either. So trying to figure out how I can have an impact and contribute, I'm not just in one specific community, but in the collective as a whole was a struggle and just leaning on my, leaning on my corporate experience and my life experience and, and all of that kind of stuff. I was able to take a step back and see all of these places where we were falling on our faces and not making it easy for people because if it's not easy for me i guarantee you that there's going to be other people it's not easy for um so yeah and that was a big that was a big driving factor is what can we do to set things up in a way that just makes sense and people can just do what they what they need to do and what they feel called to do because if, if, the, if the barrier to entry is too high, if there's too much friction, it doesn't matter how motivated they are. They're not going to take the action they want to take. Definitely, definitely. Um, I think now would be a good time to open things up to audience questions. So there's two ways that we could do this. I know you said hand raising is disabled. So either if you guys just want to like drop an emoji and we can call you, I could like invite you to stage if I see that you want to come to stage. So drop in the voice text. Or if you just want to type out your question in the voice text and I can kind of ask it to these guys on stage. Um, either one works for people in the audience. It, and it could have been my server access as well. I might not have just um, had access. Got you, got you, got you. Yeah, just to keep it. And if you can raise your hand, go, go ahead and raise your hand. We'll, we'll open it up to all different ways of, uh, of contributing here. Um, while we're waiting on those, though, do you, either of you guys have any particular topic that you think is like you would love to cover in this conversation that you think is like interesting to the forefront community? Um, I have a couple other questions I could ask as well if nobody else is, uh, has anything, but I know we have 20 minutes left on time. So just want to make sure people have the opportunity to do so if they want. Okay. I'd say go um, ahead and ask your questions. <laughs> I, if, I, if I try and keep adding stuff on, I'm going to start talking myself around in circles about what I'm passionate about. So that's not going to help anyone. No, you're totally good. Um, so I asked a question around the inter-guild participation, um, but would like to zoom out a little bit and ask a question around insert dial participation, right? So you guys mentioned, Grendel mentioned this project with uh, um, index co-op, for example, and the bed index. I think I'm super excited for that to drop. I can see that being a, a huge product for both of the, your communities. Um, what do those inter DAO relations look like? That's something I've been thinking about a lot and I think is like going to be foundational to this ecosystem growing. Um, but obviously still very, very early on as people are just trying to figure out what happens within a DAO, let alone between different DAOs, right? So how have those relationships been developed for you guys? Who decides, like, who is the the front person that's communicating with other DAOs versus the people who are working internally? Is that a separate guild that handles that? Or is it members across guilds? Like, how are you guys thinking about that? Uh, Grendel may have deeper insights than than me on that one. But uh, at this point, for lack of a better word, it's, it's anarchy. Um, we don't really like business development is a guild. I had spun that up um, due to us needing revenue generating activities. 
and as a way to facilitate the like inter DAO operations. Um, it's evolved a lot past then, but the way it's been working right now is there's, I mean, there's over 5,000 people in our, in our server. Uh, it's, it's quite a lot of people. Everybody has their own connections, their own relationships, their own lives. So it's a lot of this stuff has just been organically, organically forming. And then as people run out of bandwidth to carry the gauntlet, that just kind of gets passed off to somebody else uh much like i'm much like a similar manner to what you guys have experienced back here i think it was frog monkey uh started off the relationship and now um Grendel's here and i stepped up offering to support Grendel because i just love networking with other organizations um and Grendel's pretty awesome too i like working with him it's always a pleasure so yeah it, it's pretty much just like Everybody just kind of has their own relationships, their own communities, their own strengths. And we just really empower people to do what feels right for them. And if it's in alignment with the bankless visions in general, then uh, with enough of a soft consensus, we work on building things out. In terms of specific projects, it really is determined on a case by case basis. Um, another DAO right now, we have something working where we're exchanging members. Um, so they have some members coming over to help us in some areas that we feel we could need a lot of help. Um, I've been pioneering member benefits and different ways to take care of members within communities. So I'm jumping over there to help out with their community management issues, member benefits, um, that kind of stuff. And yeah, really, the sky's the, the sky's the limit. And the only way it's going to get hatched out is, I guess, just letting it happen organically. And through that, we'll figure out what works. We'll figure out what doesn't. And then we can start optimizing from that type of need. Grendel, anything you want to add there? Well, we, we are starting uh, these days uh, to uh, write a proposal on ambassadors uh, for, the, for, for the DAO. Yeah, for the bankless DAO that, that will be able to, to talk uh, uh, with other DAOs. It is uh, something that we uh, read that uh, many other DAOs are doing. Uh, the, um, in, uh, Yarn, I think, is doing it. And then we started. We started uh, not giving ourselves the, 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 the rank of ambassadors, but we started giving other DAOs members that are visiting, that are explaining to us uh, how they, they everything works inside the DAO, or they want to, to give, uh, to, to help us doing some uh, um, kind of uh, commun shared communications, then we gave them uh, the rank of ambassadors. They are the ambassadors. Now, we have ambassador from outside, we don't have ambassador from inside to other to the other DAO, but this is something we are working on. But uh, as, uh, as Coach said, now um, it is a kind of a, a chaos here for these two, for, for these two, and so I am here talking with you, um, and uh, coach is here to coach. Uh, was talking with uh, Yuma yesterday and uh, with many other doubt. So it is it is a it is a moment where the private uh, initiative is uh, winning because what we are doing is uh, doing the best. Uh, because it is our interest doing that, but also the best for the DAO. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. And I think, again, it's one of those things where, I mean, Coach mentioned just like complete anarchy. Um, I think a lot of these initiatives, as much as you try to create structure at the beginning, have to start off like that. You learn a lot of lessons with trial by fire um, and kind of just have to get thrown in, right? So definitely a, uh, I think something that will shift as the, as the space matures, but overall, I think there's no better way to learn and, and get rolling as a DAO than just to like try things out and get the community involved and see what happens. Um, Captain Skeletor had a great question here, and Grendel, I know you gave a shot to answer it, but I'd love you to answer it like out loud. Is just how have you all handled curating and vetting inbound interests without gatekeeping? So making sure that like anybody who wants to vote and get involved can get involved. Um, while also ensuring that like there's high quality talent working on the projects that are, are necessary to move the top forward. 
I can. Go ahead, I, you want <laughs> sure. I can speak to that. That's um, I've been heavily involved in that. It really um, comes down to the onboarding process, uh, especially when you, if you want to talk about contributors, we have kind of like our level zero channel set. Um, which is more for people who don't have the bank requirements to get involved. Um, from there, they can funnel into a get involved channel. They can offer their services. Um, they can find a spot where they want to. Basically, like we have our public, our notion, which is a wiki. Um, they can go through there. They can talk to me. They can talk to Grendel or any of the other contributors. Um, and just share their skill set, share what they're passionate about, what their vision is, why they want to get involved, all of that kind of stuff. Um, they usually find projects that they get interested in. And then from there, it's just a matter of talking with the respective team and seeing if there's positions open um, or things that they need help on and finding ways to get them contributing and involved. So there is a bit of a screening process. As we, as much as we preach like automation and making things as seamless as possible for people, we're always going to need that human element, and we're always going to need people like Grendel or myself to step in and provide that guidance or that coaching. And it really does go a long way. Um, from there, I mean, we understand that the bank requirements on our end to join the server it can be a bit much for some people, a uh, few thousand dollars. So to mitigate that, we've launched a couple of different initiatives to try and help with that. We have our bounty board so that people can earn their way in. Um, basically, they complete tasks, contribute to the DAO and earn bank for that. Another option is if somebody is a really good fit for the DAO, they're really lit up and ready to go. Uh, we can issue them guest passes, which is not quite an all access pass to everything in discord but it's it's pretty close enough um then they can start contributing that way they can they can earn their bank to be a full member there in terms of cross organization um again that's right now like we are working on some sort of a more formal structure i guess for lack of a better term the other option that we do have is for people who are part of organizations that we are involved with. We created a uh, DAO diplomat. It's hard to pronounce. Um, basically, DAO diplomat tag. So, for example, if people from Forefront wanted to jump in and contribute and find ways to figure out how Forefront and Bankless can develop a deeper relationship and, and collaborate and rally uh, behind initiatives a lot better, that is a true all-access all pass uh, for people from other organizations to really just roll up their sleeves, get into the weeds, and contribute however they feel best while looking for those opportunities without the restrictions. Did I cover it all, uh, Grendel? Did that land well? Yes, yes, I think, I think you did. I think that... Uh and the guest pass part uh, was uh, very interesting to, to tell uh, all of you because uh, it is how we handle the non-members right now that could be members. Yeah. No, I think that the, the Dalplomat program itself is actually a really interesting model um, because, again, going back to this idea of, like, the inner doubt relations, like, there's going to become a point where, like, it's really valuable and it's currently the point where it's really valuable to like collaborate and work with other DAOs and have them involved in the ecosystem as much as possible. But at the same time, creating token gates for each and every community makes it difficult for that like sort of shared governance to happen. Um, so creating spaces for people who have kind of like already established themselves in other communities and thus like the, the level of trust necessary um, to get them involved in your community maybe can be decreased given that they have a trust they built up trust in another trusted community. Um, I think that makes a ton of sense and is definitely a way forward throughout the space. I'll be interested to see how that model develops for Pankless and, and how other DAOs implement that model as well. Um, going through the messages right here, I think we, we ended up with one last question. Um, any good suggestions on getting the engagement 
and contribution flywheel going for newer DAOs with smaller numbers of members. So I think this is less of a problem that, uh, that Bankless had at the beginning because you all had so many people who got airdrop tokens at the beginning. Um, but just in general, what are you guys' advice? What's your guys' advice on just like bootstrapping communities and bootstrapping DAOs from the beginning and, and just making sure that people can get involved from day one? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, barriers to entry are a good one. Um, Grendel can get a lot more tactile on that than I can. He's been more involved. But so the stuff that we've seen working is, I mean, Discord is Discord. It's closed. Uh, you're not, we're like, we need to be real with ourselves at the end of the day. We're not going to get people into Discord unless we're actively driving people here. So some of the ways that have worked really well are um, NFT design competitions, uh, meme showdowns, different things like that, where you can cross promote on Twitter or forum in different places where our potential community members are going to be hanging out and networking. And then from there, um, you can use that to funnel them into here and just, um, yeah, just make things fun. Welcome people, limit friction as much as possible. Uh, and just make it easy for them to get involved within their comfort levels, different things that we're testing out above and beyond that within the, the community is member benefits. I mean, sports and fitness are a great way to bring people together. So we're testing, um, doing group fitness classes for the DAO um, with a couple of different DAOs, actually. Um, just different health programs, different ways for people to take care of themselves. Um, because at the end of the day, your people aren't going to be able to take care of the people that you want to take care of unless you're taking care of them. So if you're taking care of our, our people, we can empower them to be more productive, to be more engaged, and they will do a better job of servicing the, the clients or the types of people that we want to attract on that end for our business. At Grendel, you'll, uh, you'll have a lot more in depth to save up quote from there. Well, not really. I mean, uh, I mean uh, um, there are many ways that uh, a community could bootstrap uh, because uh, we are talking about DAOs and uh, many people in each DAO would like to be in other DAO too because the DAO, uh, DAO sphere is something that is so amazing and every one of us uh, have many interests that could be uh, could found a, 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 a safe harbor in many different DAOs. So it is more a way to communicate what, which are the main uh, goals, aims uh, of each DAO. And I think that many, many people would come, will come. At least at first they will be contributors so without being members, maybe because they will want to have the amount of token, but being in a, in a, in a social environment where, where you, where you can feel to be accepted, where, where you feel to, to achieve uh, what you like, then uh, there will be a time when you will decide to be a member, a full member. I, I see that uh, we have uh, uh, another, another bankless DAO contributor in the audience uh, is uh, DK Crew. I don't know if uh, maybe he wants to add something because uh, uh, you have another point of view that maybe could be shared in those last minutes uh, that maybe completing what we said today. Yeah, feel free to raise your hand if you want to come up to stage. Um, like Grendel said, we only have a few minutes left of the conversation, so I'm not sure how much we'll be able to dive in. Um, but if you'd like to come up and, and close things up. Yeah, being being a DA dev, maybe he can uh, he can explain something that me and uh, and uh, and coach didn't uh, because uh, he he could have a, a different point of view and maybe it could be interesting for all of us. Can you hear me? Yep. Hey, here. This is DJ. So. Um, I'm currently a dev uh, in the bank Castel, and I'm working on the onboard projects. Uh, I'm not sure what I can add because I, I missed the beginning of the meeting, but uh, if you have questions, I can help you with that. 
Yeah, I think the the final question that we were just riffing on was just the uh, onboarding and bootstrapping the community, whether it's like starting a DAO from scratch or whether it's like starting a new guild. Like, how do you ensure that like people are getting involved and and kind of like at those beginning stages? Um, I know we don't have a ton of time left, and that's a pretty big question. If you have any thoughts there, you'd like to add? Yeah, I'm not sure what to add, but uh, it's not easy to get people involved. Lowing, lowering the barrier is uh, one of the best thing you can do. Definitely, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not so sure what what <laughs> else to add. Huh? No, all good, all good. I think. Uh, and uh, Coach and Grendel gave fantastic answers already. They kind of covered everything, so totally understand. But uh, honestly, at that point, if there are no other audience questions, I think we could wrap up there. Um, Bengals Dow team, Grendel, Coach, BA, I think uh, I, I really appreciate you guys coming through. Um, this is a fantastic conversation. I think we learned a lot. There's a ton of tactical advice that we could take away from what you guys are doing at Bengals Dow. Um, and I think a lot of DAOs moving forward are going to, to you, you guys as like a role model and as a, as a model in general to build their communities around. So um appreciate you guys coming to speak. And if you guys have any last words you would like to share with the community, go ahead. My tags are always open. Somebody, uh, if anybody has any questions or anything after the fact, feel free to ping me or whatever, and I'll get back to you. I think that uh, the only thing that I I would like to say is that uh, I studied uh, Fortran, I studied DAO, I studied the proposal, and I think uh, you are doing a great job. So um, I think this is a great place uh, where to hang, uh, where to stay, and uh, to let it uh, grow, help uh, help this DAO grow as much as possible because there is a lot that can be done uh, here. Appreciate that. Yeah, we're very excited and we're very excited for the ways that Forefront and Bankless can, can collaborate in the future as well. Um, the audience, appreciate everybody coming through as always. We will be back on Wednesday, same time for the next Hangout. Um, it will not be a community deep dive this time around, but stay tuned for the topic. I'm very excited about it. And uh, until then, if you haven't already voted, please vote on the season one proposal. Very, very exciting stuff. Um, and we should be kicking things off relatively soon. So, yeah, excited to, to chat with everybody around all of that. Thank you for coming through the Hangout again, and we will all see each other soon. Have a good one, y'all. Thanks for having Thank us, you. guys. Cheers. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you.